about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really hello friends and enemies welcome back to happy for now today i want to talk about why i choose to read digitally uh pretty much exclusively but still own books still own manga i do read manga physically often we'll get into that i'm gonna just break this conversation down into a couple little parts so we'll start off with my reading journey as far as being a digital reader i had kind of stopped reading in late high school I feel like I mean I was still reading I remember picking up like Twilight when it came out like the last one um, and I remember like reading that and doing audiobooks a lot when I started college I used to listen to the same audiobooks over and over while I studied um, tell me you have ADHD without telling me you have ADHD I guess uh, but yeah I used to do that a lot and I utilized stuff like that just ex uh, extensively but I found that I was like going to the local bookshop, I really liked supporting them and I liked buying books and I liked reading them, but it was taking me forever and then I didn't want to tote them around the campus necessarily with me, especially because like, y'all know, like you can't just take one book because what if you finish that book? Then you gotta take a second book. What if you don't read that second book? You take a third book with you and you're just like, next thing you know, you've got a stack of books you're taking, which is why I switched to the Kindle because I literally can just take this tiny device and throw it in my bag and go and I have most of my library on it. Um, I don't actually have all the books I own downloaded, but I do have a good enough amount that honestly I'm not gonna run into the problem that I think I'm gonna have when I only have my like one paperback with me. That is part of the reason I switched. Uh, I also found um, like one of my roommates had one and I really really liked the idea of like reading in the tub and not getting your book wet. Back before Kindles were waterproof and you'd put them in a Ziploc bag, it was great. And then yeah, around this time when I got my first Kindle I had just found romance and been introduced to it. I was introduced via paranormal and my college roommate was a big paranormal reader and she gave me the first Dark Hunters book. She gave me the first Dark Hunters book and I devoured it and never looked back. This is part of why I have over a thousand e-read ebooks on my Kindle is because of the fact that I've had a Kindle since like 2009 I think or eight. I'm not I think nine. I think nine. Um, I'm not positive. I couldn't find my first Kindle on my Amazon store so I don't know if my mom bought it for me as like a gift. So can't remember but I do know that I've had one for a long time I had a Kindle keyboard even and my mom actually owned the first original Kindle when that came out and I remember buying it for her for Mother's Day with my brother um, the year it came out so that's a thing <laughs> uh, yeah I definitely just found that reading digitally for me became the best resource in my life and we can talk about why so digital reading has allowed me to read more because I never am out of books because I have quick and easy access to libraries and other things like Kindle Unlimited and platforms so I never have to wait for a book to show up and I never have to wait for um, me to have time to go to the store or whatever to pick up my next read which has been a game changer to say the least and free books have also been a problem that's part of the issue with the amount of unread books on my Kindle that I'm working through currently is a lot of them are free books I picked up ages ago. Uh, also when I got a Kindle I was able to start getting advanced reader copies eventually when I started like blogging which was a while ago um, and things like that which has been also really really nice. I will say other perks I've seen besides my like reading more is that I definitely see that I have less issues when I have migraines and I want to read or when I'm reading at night now, especially with the backlit Kindles, it has been such a lifesaver that I don't have to mess with like a little flip out light on the case. I don't know if anyone else remembers that on the Kindle. There used to be like a Kindle case that had a little flip out light that would light up your Kindle screen so you could read at night. It didn't even like light the whole screen. It was a whole thing. Oh, I don't miss it. But I will say that the Kindle has allowed me to do more nighttime reading, especially with the paper white and the Oasis than ever before which is definitely beneficial because some nights I can't sleep and some nights I wake up in the middle of the night and can't fall back asleep etc and also I just love the practice of reading before I fall asleep so at least when I fall asleep with a kindle in my hands and I conk myself in the head it's not too big a deal usually and I don't lose my place in the book I think the last thing is like I honestly 
couldn't live without the uh, sheer volume of digital libraries I have access to. So I have a whole video I will link to in the description for you where I talk about my out-of-state library cards. Um, I don't, nothing in it's out of date, so you can definitely go check it out and find out how to get yourself an out-of-state library card if you're interested. It is one of my favorite things I've ever done for myself. <laughs> I use them so much. They are 100% what empower me to read. I always have books coming in. I'm always checking things out. I'm always using it. I spend just under $100 a year on two different out-of-state library cards and I'm not looking back. <laughs> That's for sure because it has been a game changer again. I'm able to read those new releases I'm curious about and if I hate them, it's not a big deal. I didn't invest too much money. You know, I've been able to pick up audiobooks that way, of course, as well. Another point with that is uh, on that video, I talk about using a service called eReader IQ, which allows you to track ebook prices where I'm able to get books for way, way cheaper than I could ever get them, especially lately when the trend has been that these new releases within about three months are $2.99 or $3.99. And I just wait. Like, I'll buy, like, when a. Uh, um, when a mass market paperback romance comes out, I will buy that for $6.99, $5.99, like right in that price range. I'm fine with that. But when these $10.99 plus ebooks come out that are romance, I'm not going to spend that because I will read these books in a day. And because of that, I use eReader IQ and I will snag those books on sale if it has like an extraordinarily long wait on my library. Um, okay, so let's talk about why I read manga both physically and digitally. The big key here is price and I'm not going to deny it. Price drives my digital reading as well because I'm able to read as much as I do in a year because I read digitally and it's cheaper. It is truly cheaper. Also, I know that with the amount I read in a year, my e-reader is definitely saving trees <laughs> at the end of the day versus if I read that many books physically. So manga for me is price completely based on price if a manga is $6.99 to digitally read and I want to read it that way I will read it that way if a manga is $9.99 $8.99 and $10.99 $11.99 $11 physically I will opt to buy a physical copy because if I don't like it I can sell it and manga does have a decent ish resale value you can definitely get a little less than you paid for it when you resell it for some series not every series so that for me is the part of the reason um, I do read a lot of digital manga through my Brooklyn Public Library card that I have and that has been really great because I'm able to try out series before I buy them for my shelves and I'm also able to use my Viz app that I pay $1.99 a month for and I read a lot of manga that way as well because there is a ton of Viz media titles available to you there and I think it's just it's too good of a savings not to take advantage of it um, and it's too good of a way to make sure that manga cuts are paid appropriately for their work versus reading scans online. Definitely highly recommend either of those options if you want to read manga digitally and not buy it physically because you can get so many manga through the Brooklyn Public Library and that Viz app. Now I do buy manga physically a lot as well. One because I have a really great bookstore near me that has a ton of manga. Two because I like to support small businesses so I do like ordering from like right stuff to buy my manga on sale and it's at such a discounted rate that sometimes it's just better for me to occasionally make a big order and have that come in with the mangas I want to read and then I can read them all. Plus, I mean, it's really hard because like manga is such a, it's just like comics. I used to be a comic book reader, which I also read digitally and physically, it just depended. But a lot of them came with the digital code, so I would actually opt to read the digital editions and then just bag and board my physicals. But because of this, I am very well aware of the cost to consume and to engage in these hobbies that are things like reading manga or <laughs> Uh, comic books and like I, I just try to save money where I can with it because I know it's expensive I you know if I'm lucky a comic book takes me 15 to 20 minutes to read and a manga is 30 to 45 if I'm lucky depending on the amount of text in it sometimes an hour I have mangas I've read in 15 minutes so that cost for enjoyment is very high um, which means that sometimes I just want to get a physical item of it so that I can like look at it and be like, I read that. So yes, I do, I do find that part kind of rewarding. Uh, the next thing, okay, so why do I still own physical books? Like I said, I have two bookshelves behind me that are pretty stuffed. These bottom shelves are not the fullest. One of them is like packed with paperbacks I need to figure out what I want to do with, but yeah. And I do still buy physical books. I have, I have like five down here. I'm a member of Katie Roberts' Patreon where I get her paperback books every other month. She ships out her newest releases signed. 
um, and it's a great deal, honestly, for her paperbacks, so I'm happy to do it, and I really like her writing, so for me it's worth it, but why do I buy physical books? Well, let me tell you. Because, one, if I buy a book from, if I get a book from the library and I loved it, I'm talking four or five stars, I need to prune these shelves again soon, but four or five star read, right? absolutely adored it. I want to put it on my shelves. It's not just because I do booktube, like I've had shelves since before I did booktube. I like buying books when I love a book and can put it on my shelves and think about it. Okay, so also my friends will travel and get me things like Top Elf from the Word Bookstore in Brooklyn signed by the author because they work there. And I love gifts like this. These are so special to me. Or I go to a cute indie bookstore on a trip and I pick up one of these Penguin Classics. So I have Quite a few of these i don't have all of them by any means but you know this is the secret garden and these are beautiful and one day when i have a bigger space for my library or maybe i have shelves differently in my living room or somewhere like that i may put these out because they're beautiful sometimes it's as simple as that i want to buy a childhood favorite in a special edition like Bonicula. i love this book they came out with this beautiful edition it does have some issues i'm not going to deny you that but i mean look at this i I just love it. It's so cool. It's so unique. And I wanted to have it so I could put it on my shelves because this was a childhood favorite. It's not that I don't like souvenirs or don't have other things from trips, but for me, one of my one of my favorite things of going anywhere new is finding a bookstore and visiting it. And hopefully it's a small indie bookstore. And picking up something unique for my shelves. Like I said, the cloth bounds. Um, my partner got me all of the Clothbound Jane Austens for Christmas one year because I didn't have anything I really wanted and I've not even read Jane Austen before but I own those because they're beautiful and I think it's okay to just want to own things because they're pretty and that's kind of how I feel about books and I love seeing the books I love on my shelves uh, every day like every single day it's great I love it and it's really funny because I can actually tell you where I got most of these books when it comes down to it as well which I don't think a lot of people expect probably but yeah a lot of the books I own you know also we have to take into account that I do attend bookish events so if I'm gonna meet an author I love I'm gonna have them sign a copy of their book I'm not gonna have them sign my Kindle that I sometimes upgrade or breaks etc I want them to sign something that I can put on my shelves and have for a long time um, and that's important to me and I love getting to meet these authors I adore and have them sign stuff so that's why I have two bookshelves full of books <laughs> and don't read physically pretty much ever I also enjoy collecting fun romance mass markets from the 70s and well the 80s and the 90s and the 70s um, because they're so unique which is why I have tender as the storm and things like that too I view that as like a historical thing like collecting archival material almost <laughs> but yeah I'm just a nerd I love books a lot so it's the thing I get on trips it's the thing I collect when it comes down to it and I think it's okay to be a digital reader and buy the books you love physically I guess my one last closing point is I think the one thing we don't consider enough when we shame people for being a digital reader is the ableist language we're using when discussing this because sometimes my hands hurt and I literally could not hold a physical book to save my life and I need to read digitally because that gives me the ability to read a book when that's what I want to do and maybe I'm not capable at the moment of holding a tome of <laughs> considerable size or you know again there's no shame in putting an audiobook on and listening to your audiobook because that's what you can handle right now I definitely think that's a big key part of this this conversation. There's like an elitism sometimes around the idea of like choosing to read digitally and not physically. And I just think that like that's bullshit. You gotta do what you wanna do. And I think that it's totally valid either way. But I do think, you know, the conversation of why we read digitally should be a little more grounded in the idea that we all have different abilities and needs in our reading lives. And sometimes a digital reader is fulfilled that way for a lot of reasons you may not think about. I know for me, I will put a book down and walk away, but my ADHD with the screen and buttons, I don't know why, but I'm like in the zone and will sit there and read a whole book in three hours. All right, y'all, Um, let me know what kind of reader you are in the comments down below. I will see y'all in a few days with my next video. I'll link to the video as I mentioned in that description box, as well as links to anywhere you can be my friend on social media. And I will see y'all in just a few days.
I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know